today with the oceans of the world in jeopardy because of mass pollution, of course, conservation and care for the oceans have become a major, major activity. Every fish you'll be seeing is followed by an underwater camera. In the next few minutes, we'll meet some of the brave photographer explorers who have carried these cameras all over the world. Legendary Stan Waterman, producer, photographer, and writer of over 40 films. Emmy Award-winning IMAX producers Howard and Michelle Hall of Howard Hall Productions. Richie Kohler of the History Channel's Deep Sea Detectives. And Wendy Benchley, wife of Peter Benchley, author of the blockbuster book and movie, Jaws. They have spent years capturing their visions for the TV and movie screens so that we could glimpse the beauty and drama of the fascinating world beneath the sea, which now needs our help to save from many kinds of destruction. They know that like the fish of the sea, we all rely on the oceans for our very life. They have played major roles in saving the oceans one camera at a time. I think it's just unfortunate that the ocean is out of sight, out of mind for the majority of people. So if they only saw the destruction that industrial fisheries cause to the wildlife, or if they only saw the plastic pollution that I've seen in some of the most remote islands in the world, or if people could actually see the entanglement of marine mammals and discarded fishing nets, I think there'd be a lot more action to protect the ocean. There has been a huge uh, awareness that pollution had to stop. And I've seen it. I've seen the benefit of that. But we need to do more. We need to be better. I mean, when we look today, um, things that most people use when they go to the beach, sunblock, sunscreen, is killing coral reefs. They've already made a, a, a direct connection. So what does that mean? Well, it may mean that if people are going to go swimming, we either have to rethink the technology of what we're using for sunscreen and sunblock. We need to be aware of everything we do that can affect our oceans. And that means everything that we put in our yards, everything that we put in our drains, everything we do eventually goes into our water system, that goes into our rivers, our streams, and goes into our oceans. So it really does start with every single one of us protecting our water system that goes into our oceans. Right now we're at a tipping point with the ocean, um, and I think a good tipping point. Uh, I think the, that, that all of the NGOs and governments around the world realize that with climate change coming, uh, we really have to get going to keep the ocean healthy uh, in order to give us the oxygen we need and the fish we need to eat, etc. Saving the ocean is a big job. Uh, the biggest problem we have environmentally is there's just too many people on the planet. And any type of environmental movement that doesn't address the fact that we have too many people uh, is a bit insincere. Uh, beyond that, obviously, uh, pollution and ocean acidification, climate change are important, 
But as far as the ocean is concerned, the big problem really today that's being ignored is overfishing. Uh, there's too much, too many resources going into the study of climate change and not enough resources put into curbing overfishing. And that's what's really causing coral reefs to die back. That's what's changing ecosystems all around the globe. Just we're taking too many fish out of the ocean. When you take animals out of the ocean, it affects the ecology and eventually whole ecosystems collapse when you take too many species out. In my lifetime, I've watched the depletion of what is a finite resource, but we have to recognize that back then, 30 years ago, we didn't realize that. We thought the ocean was bountiful. We thought that it would always just repopulate. Now we have a, a greater degree of conservancy. That is our responsibility. And that is the next generation, because we don't want this. We don't want these unique life forms, some of them that we need for sustenance, to go the way of the dodo. Um, the oceans are where a great, and I don't know the number off the top of my head, a great large percentage of the population of this planet gets their protein. And yet we treat fishing like a free-for-all in the ocean. And to me, um, I hear a lot of concern about a lot of different environmental issues, but I think the most pressing one in the ocean right now, in the world right now, is overfishing. There is a population of humans that is expanding at an incredible rate. We're up to seven billion people. The oceans feed the vast majority of them. And uh, if we don't take some care of that, we're gonna have a major problem. People, and, people are worried about global warming, and it's certainly a Climate change is a concern, but I personally feel um, that the population of the Earth will starve long before they will be too hot. So um, I think that if people can get to understand these issues and then get the word out, you know, fishing needs to be controlled a little bit better. You know, things like you know, shark finning, which is just killing animals for for no good reason. I mean, that that kind of stuff needs to needs to be stopped so that the oceans can remain healthy enough that we as a species can survive. You know, when I first started diving off the coast here of New Jersey, I went to a wreck called the Resort, and this was 1982. And when I dove the Resort, I was spearfishing, and I saw giant cod, which now we refer to them as tom cod, where they were six foot long. And of course, I, I shot one and I brought it home for but now we don't see those cod anymore, anywhere. They're gone. They've been eradicated. And, and now even the cod fishery is suffering. So in my lifetime, I've watched the depletion of what is a finite resource. But we have to recognize that back then, 30 years ago, we didn't realize that. We thought the ocean was bountiful. We thought that it would always just repopulate. Younger generations uh, are, are, are the future of the planet, uh, and, and uh, it, it's really making sure that, that that generation has a sound understanding of what the problems are and places themselves in a position to, to be able to answer those questions as much as anything else in terms of how do you, how do you answer the questions that, and, and, the, and the issues for that generation to define what the questions are and to ask the right questions and then be capable enough uh, academically to, to be able to answer those questions. In terms of what young people might do to uh, help raise awareness is being aware of those issues and then looking inside at what your, where your talents lie and what your passions are and how you can um, use those talents, develop talents, whether it be writing, whether it be filmmaking, uh, public speaking, getting into politics, to um, disseminate that information to the world. The bigger picture of what we're doing to pl pollute our oceans, what we're doing to our marine mammals, but each individual can take responsibility for our oceans, whether it's throwing that um, piece of pollution, throwing that piece of paper um, in the streets that clogs up our drains or our gutters, or using pesticides, or, um, or not protecting um, 
the uh, marine life that you have in your neighborhoods. Um, every single individual can make an impact. Every other breath we take is a gift from the ocean. So if we had that sense of connection, we might not see it every day, we might not be at the beach on a walk or out on a sailboat or fishing or kayaking, but every day the ocean is sustaining us. So we need to return that favor and we need to start taking that appreciation and, and giving back in ways of protection. The only reason why life exists on this planet is because of these oceans. And if we kill the oceans, then we've killed the planet and we've killed ourselves.